If you have a loved one who is incapacitated or otherwise can't really perform some sort of immigration interview, whether it's for a grand, green card or naturalization, they might be eligible for the 646 medical exam exemption where somebody has to take them to a medical exam and that medical exam has to show that they are not in fact capable of doing an interview themselves. So then the question becomes, what do you do from that point on once you have the exam? What is your role as the advocate, as the person that's uh, with them, with your loved one throughout this journey? We just had an interview, so it's fresh in our mind, uh, where we had to kind of go through the scenario with a client and an elderly parent. So let's talk about it after the break. Let's say you have an elderly parent, a father in this case, whose dementia has gotten worse since their initial immigrant visa interview, let's say at a consulate, around 2015, so six years prior to today. In 2015, your father did very well on his immigrant visa interview. However, it's 2021, He's uh, been stuck in naturalization processing for a year and a half, and uh, you now have to present uh, a medical exam exemption uh, for your father to be able to get his oath ceremony without having to pass the civics exam and the interview. To do that, you can't just send your father in by himself because obviously he can't, he can't speak for himself, he can't present himself, so you um, as their, uh, as his child or, or maybe as, as his family member have to go in with him. So the question becomes, what is your role in that scenario? How are you supposed to uh, represent the interests of your father? And, and maybe more importantly, what is the officer, the USCIS officer expecting of you? I already covered how when you're an advocate uh, for somebody who's uh, incapacitated, uh, that you need to be polite because everything you say does go on the record and I'm gonna have Santiago put that video up here. Um, it was from last week. Um, but what you're gonna be asked to do is actually uh, sort of uh, testify as to the nature of the medical exam that is before the officer, the 646. Specifically, the officer is going to be looking to see that the exam that was given is legitimate and that it matches your experience with your father, okay? With your loved one, the father's from the example. And so what is your primary task going into that interview? Your primary task going into that interview is to be familiar with the medical exam. There's going to be uh, medical language on that 646 form because it's filled out by a physician. So you need to really take the take on the task of understanding the words and the vocabulary that are being used on that medical exam. If somebody says dementia, be sure you know what the symptoms of dementia are. If, if the exam mentions that there are headaches, if the exam mentions that there's difficulty seeing in bright light, you need to be aware of that and almost really study it as if you're studying for an exam with the officer. What's going to give credibility to that exam, apart from the signature of you know, the physician and the fact that you, know, you, you took them to, you know, to a real physician, which, which you of course did, is the fact that you can match up whatever's happening in the daily life of the person you're caretaking with whatever is on the exam page. Where a problem arises, uh, there's kind of two areas. Number one, what I've seen in the past is that the USCIS officer will say, well, hey, hold on. You're telling me your father can't speak now, but here in 2015 when they did their uh, immigrant visa interview, right? So we're, let's say we're at the naturalization stage. With the immigrant visa interview, they spoke just fine. How has you know, he deteriorated so quickly? Um, and at that point, you really need to be sticking to the four corners of the medical exam and saying, look, this is what's before us. This is what the doctor has found. This is what I see in daily life. Of course, there can be deterioration in health for anybody. So, you know, you say that that timing issue that you're mentioning is, is really irrelevant. His condition is as it's described on the medical exam right now. So that's one, right? The officer is going to be looking at the difference between a prior interview and a current interview. Really, they shouldn't be doing that 
but if they do, you need to stick to the four corners of the exam, okay? The other thing they're gonna be doing is looking for discrepancies between the exam and then your experience with your loved one and, and the way that the uh, your loved one presents themselves in the interview. If your loved one's chitty chatty with you the whole time and is asking questions and it just looks like you're just translating, and it doesn't look like they're incapacitated, that, 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 that's gonna be an issue. So, you know, obviously, um, if, if, if it's truly incapacitated, you're, you're, you know, you've got nothing to worry about there. Uh, but you shouldn't be afraid to talk more and you shouldn't be afraid to talk on behalf of your parent because after all, you're there to show that they're incapacitated. Okay, so two problems, this timing issue, it's like, why were they this way five, 10 years ago? How are they this way now? And again, you point to the four corners of the page. And then two, creating a consistency between what's on the page of that medical exam and what you're actually telling the officer happens in day-to-day -day life. Um, and you do that by being aware of what is on the exam and, and being prepared to talk about the day-to-day -day life of your incapacitated loved one, okay? As an attorney, um, uh, uh, we would advocate the same way within the four corners of the page. Uh, we would prepare the same way, essentially, knowing both the immigration history and, and the medical exam contents of, of the client. Anyway, I hope this helps. Just a practical tip. It's, it's, it's a mysterious process, like what's gonna happen when we go in, uh, but it's totally doable. We just we just got a client um, last week uh, for their, their mother just received an oath ceremony because she was uh, incapacitated. And uh, so, you know, it's, it's perfectly doable, but it's a mystery, and so I wanted to share this with you. If you made it this far, go ahead and uh, subscribe and like. You know, I'm always trying to give you good stuff, okay? Take care now.